So it has been a few months already since the release of the M3 series MacBooks, and I'm here to talk about my experience from my ownership of having the M3 Max MacBook Pro. There's some things that I regret doing and things that I enjoy a lot from my MacBook, and I wanna share my experience to give you some feedback and things that you may wanna know in case you're looking into buying one yourself. So here are some things that I would have done differently with my M3 Max MacBook Pro. For first, I wanna thank you all for helping me achieve the 1,000 subscribers from my last video. It was a huge milestone of mine and I cannot believe that we're already here But now don't forget to like and subscribe So we're trying to now go for the 5,000 subscribers and with your help I'm very sure that we're gonna be able to achieve that as well But now let's go back to the topic of the video first It's not hard to point out how good this laptop is it runs every task I put it through with ease It has all the ports I need to work comfortably on the go and it's the perfect size Although mine is mostly acting as a desktop majority of the time I appreciate the portability factor when demanding tasks are require and my M4 iPad Pro is not an option. But if I could go back, one of the things that I for sure would do different is the RAM. When I bought mine, I was coming from an M1 Pro MacBook Pro and it was at the very beginning of my creative journey. When I got that MacBook, it was the best MacBook obviously I've ever had. I was coming from an Intel MacBook Pro and it was a huge jump in performance. Everything overall was pretty good for simple video editing in Final Cut Pro and not much color grading at that time because I didn't have a proper camera and it pretty much served very well for everything else that I needed at that time. But I only had 16 gigs of RAM. That was the first limiting factor that held me back from being more creative and trying new things. And I was getting into editing videos that were a lot bigger than the ones that I was working on at the time. Adding to that some multitasking, which was very difficult already with 16 gigs of RAM, I decided to buy the current MacBook that I have, which is the M3 Max MacBook Pro. When I bought it, I thought that 32 gigs was obviously enough because coming from 16, I thought that maybe if I double that amount, I will have enough to take care of everything, plus I had the M3 Max chip, so it should be more efficient, which it has. It has been extremely powerful, and I haven't had a single complaint about performance when it comes to running any app or any type of task that I'm trying to put through it. However, when multitasking, I get quite close to maxing out my RAM without much effort. With this experience, I have a better understanding of what to get when I upgrade my MacBook in the future to make sure that I'll be good for many years to come. And of course, I'm not done playing the insane power this laptop has. The M3 Max is a beast, and even the base configuration is impressive. My issues are mostly niche to my specific needs. For most people, this laptop will be more than enough in terms of unified memory and performance, especially when running highly demanding apps. There's a great number of apps in the App Store I love to use with this laptop, but some of them are quite expensive. Luckily, our sponsor for this video has a brilliant solution for that. Setup is an app that gives you access to more than 200 amazing apps for your Mac with a small subscription. It's more cost effective than buying each app individually, helping to reduce the cost of all the tools you need. Their library includes incredible apps to improve productivity, learn new skills, enhance creative work, work, AI system and coding tools. An amazing feature that I love is Setup AI Assistant, which helps you find the app you need to complete a task by simply writing the type of work you're planning to do, and it will recommend you an app for you to try. Setup also has a new arrival section for you to explore new apps they've incorporated into their service. Setup offers a wide range of other applications that can assist you as well. Check the link in the description for more. And thanks Setup for sponsoring this video. Another thing I would have done differently if I had the opportunity to buy a new MacBook again would be to pick a different storage configuration. Mine is the one terabyte of storage and honestly, it's not enough for what I do. I typically work and do all of my content and editing videos and all that stuff directly from my SSD which is the Samsung T7. It's good enough for what I do and it's fast and all that stuff and it has its advantages, you know? When I use that, I can transfer my work between different devices, which is a huge plus and also allows me to keep my MacBook as clean as possible. But the problem is that there's nothing better than having internal storage because it has better write and read speeds. So as my business keeps growing and my channel keeps growing as well, my whole production and business side of things is gonna keep expanding. So one terabyte is not enough now and it will not be enough later on. So what I need to focus now is whenever I get the opportunity to buy a new MacBook, it'll be the two terabyte at least as my minimum storage amount that I should have to make everything work as smooth as possible. And obviously I'll keep my SSDs because there's some aspects of having an SSD that is very beneficial, especially if you have multiple devices. But I learned now that one terabyte is definitely way too little, especially when you edit 10 bit 4K videos, it's crazy. After only a few projects, my whole MacBook is full and I need to start deleting things, which is not very convenient. Plus, 
start slowing down as well. For many of you, one terabyte will be probably more than enough. So use my experience as reference, but it's not necessarily what you will need, but at least you have an idea of if you wanna do the same things that I'm doing, eventually one terabyte will be too little. Like I remember the times when one terabyte was a lot of storage, but it's definitely not like that anymore. As I said before, the M3 Max performance is unlike anything I've owned in the past. It's by far the best performing computer that I've had, and it has completely eliminated the need for a desktop since it's powerful enough to work as one. I mostly use mine in clamshell mode with my studio display, which provides the best possible experience using Mac OS, especially when color accuracy is important for your work. I also chose the 14 inch MacBook Pro for similar reasons because my fiance has a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it's quite big and a lot heavier than this one. The 16 inch makes more sense if you don't work directly on a monitor. Unless you use your 16 inch MacBook Pro as an additional monitor, it doesn't really add much to the experience. And when I need more room to work with, I work with my studio display, which is solve all my problems. It's simply the best monitor I've ever used. And I know it's an expensive display, guys. I know it's not for everybody, but if you're in the market for it and you've been thinking if you should buy this new display, honestly, go for it, you won't regret it. But anyways, but also this is just my opinion, so just use what works best for you. I haven't had any complaints in the battery department since I first owned my first M-series chip. They all have great battery balance between performance and power efficiency with the difference that the M-Max chips have high performance mode. High performance mode allows the fans to run at higher speeds. The additional cooling capacity allows the system to deliver higher performance and very intense workloads and it can improve performance in graphic intensive workflows such as color grading, motion graphics, and 3D applications. Additionally, you can experience smoother playback and faster exports, which is why I mostly use my MacBook in this configuration. The fans will only turn on when needed, so when I'm working on lighter tasks, I don't mind changing it back, honestly. I rarely play games in my MacBook, but the same logic goes with games, especially when you're in game mode, but the battery has performed great during my ownership, and that's the case for all M-series MacBooks. But yeah, if you want to buy an M3 Max for productivity and casual gaming, now you can while enjoying actual AAA games. I'm waiting for more game support in the future, but the catalog is looking pretty good. The 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro is an outstanding laptop. I really think that if you decide to buy one, you'll be good for many years to come, without a doubt. Even if you choose the base configuration model Max, which is honestly a piece of machine. But the M series chip aside, the designing is to me the best design Apple has ever done on a laptop. It really makes me think what other things Apple can do to improve this amazing frame. It has all the ports I could possibly need. It has a timeless design and the build quality has shown to be extremely durable. However, we're getting close to the new generation of Apple silicon with the new M4 coming to MacBooks likely this year. So how fast would it have to be to make me upgrade? I think it's very unlikely since the power isn't necessarily something I truly need at this moment. If anything, what will make me upgrade in the future will be more unified memory and storage since it's something that I currently struggle with. But that's mostly a me problem. Saying this, if you need a new MacBook Pro and you're looking at the M3 Max for your working needs, you should definitely get it. The only reason it'll be worth waiting for the M4 series to come up is to buy the M3 Max at a more affordable price. But unless we get major changes like a notch removal, which I highly doubt is gonna happen, Face ID to at least get a better use of that notch if it stays, or tandem OLED displays, I don't see the need for upgrading since this chip has proven to be all I ever need in a laptop. However, Apple can always surprise us with something new, so only time will tell. But anyways, I hope that you found this video useful and enjoyable and hopefully my experience can help you choose a laptop for your needs and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I made. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.